Hey everybody, I'm Dan Phelps, and this is episode two of The Joy of Recording. I'm doing a series all about my love and fascination with sound and taking it as an opportunity to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques that I use to spark creativity and forward motion in my recording process. You just heard a texture that I created in the last episode of this series where I took a very small loop and turned it into a really expansive and evolving ambient pad by using various effects. If you missed that one, go back and watch it and then join me here. In this episode, I'm going to talk about and show you how I create evocative rhythm textures as a foil for improvising and writing. It's uh, super productive for me to kind of start with an atmosphere or a mood, or even you could think of it as sort of a landscape, uh, a setting that the story of the music is going to take place in. And really from the very beginning of creating something, I'm asking myself, what is the mood? What is the atmosphere of this piece? Uh, that matters to me so much at the beginning. And I try to keep a really big picture approach to everything that I'm doing because it's important to keep the creative process rolling. So here at the beginning is you're creating your sort of first couple of layers, ambient pads, textures, and rhythm. Don't get too bogged down in the details because you don't want to slow down the creative process. You can get more and more detail oriented towards the end where you're refining things. But here at the beginning, it's like finger painting or putting big globs of oil paint on the canvas. You're just moving stuff around and trying to get to a mood as quickly as possible. I'm usually attaching something kind of visual to this process. So I'm going to listen to this again and hear off the cuff tell you what I hear when I hear this ambient pad. Kind of far-flung places are on my mind right now. Wide open spaces. I'm thinking of very northern places, Iceland, Norway. Uh, that kind of landscape where you have vast open fields and craggy cliffs in the ocean and kind of a sense of an expanse. And there's something about the sound of this pad that makes me think of that wide open space and the wind moving the grass, and like a chill in the air. <laughs> this is how I process sound and music. So I'm wanting to create something that has a little bit of that space in it and maybe also a sense of longing or loneliness to it. Uh, there's a number of ways that I approach creating rhythms in my music. When I'm moving quickly here at the beginning, I might just go play something on the drum kit and process that. I know not everybody has access to a drum kit and all of the equipment to record it. So what I'm going to do is create a track here in Pro Tools and fire up Ableton Live, which is a great way of kind of getting into a piece of music and creating something pretty quickly. It sort of treats audio like Play-Doh that you can just shove around in a bunch of different ways, and I like that. So I've got Ableton Live open, and I'm going to just start going through some loops. I have a couple of different loop libraries on my computer. One of them is the Joey Waronker loop library from Looploft. I have three different loop libraries from him, and there's a ton of really interesting textures in here. I'm just going to kind of look for something that sparks my inspiration and see if I can start shoving it around in a way and processing it in a way that makes it more evocative and textural and interesting and inspiring to play over. Kind of interesting. I 
think I'm gonna slow down the tempo from here. I'm feeling it a little slower in my body, so. I don't know, I'm gonna try 80 BPM. So here I've taken this loop and I've changed the way that Ableton deals with time stretching from basing it on beats to basing it on changing the pitch. So as I've slowed the tempo down quite a bit, it has also changed the pitch of the drums. And I actually really like the sound of slowed down drums. I think they're interesting sounding. So I'm going to go a little further and see if I can develop this idea from a sonic standpoint. I've just grabbed another loop from the same library and laid it in there and I really like the contrast between those two sounds. The second loop has a interesting kind of stereo distortion to it that I find really intriguing. And uh, this something about this slow tempo keeps it from feeling funky, but there is a little bit of a cool lope to the groove that makes me want to start laying textures over top of that. I'm going to see if there's any percussion that fits with this that I like. So I've created three different loops. I'm bringing those in on separate tracks into Pro Tools so that I can record each stereo loop individually, which will give me options later for rearranging the song by muting certain parts of the groove. And I'm running each of those tracks through a plugin on their way to being recorded into Pro Tools. So the first track I have some really dark compression going on that sounds something like this. Just kind of bringing out the rumble of that a little bit. I added a little bit of a plate reverb to the kind of funky vinyl sounding loop just to add some throw and depth to the sound. just to kind of push the sound a little further back into the sound stage. And for the tambourine track, I ran that through a tape simulator just to kind of darken it down and make it a little earthier sounding. Here's my whole loop texture situation. digging that as a starting place so I'm going to record some of that from Ableton into Pro Tools so that I can turn off Ableton Live and not be sucking up all that CPU power to run that as a plug-in Pro Tools. So one thing I noticed and this often happens to me is kind of in the heat of throwing a bunch of things together in Ableton I'll create some kind of fairly dense and complicated rhythm and then realized once I've captured it in Pro Tools, I kind of want to strip it back to something more elemental to begin with. Again, the point is to keep moving quickly and follow inspiration to wherever it leads without overthinking the process and getting too detail oriented. But here, when I begin to improvise over this with the first sort of chordal and melodic ideas, I want to have something more basic. So I'm going to go back to that low 
loop now that I've captured it in Pro Tools and see if I can process it in a way that sort of harkens to that expansive, lonely feeling that I had in mind, knowing that I have these other loops kind of in my back pocket and I can add them to the arrangement as I go. So I found another approach for that low loop by applying the Sound Toys Filter Freak 2 plugin to it, creating sort of a new rhythm and a much more mysterious feeling, which I'm thinking ahead towards how I might want this track to begin with something more subtle than that sort of all out wall of rhythm that I had. Here, here's what it sounds like now. The good thing about this is it will leave a lot of room for whatever I'm going to come and improvise over top, and I still have my other layers of rhythm that I can add in as I feel the arrangement needs to progress. I'm going to try one more thing. I'm going to put some kind of effect on the tambourine in order to turn it into maybe like a ghostly rhythmic texture to add to this, less like a straight up somebody shaking a tambourine. So. I kind of dig that. It plays off of the rhythm of the other loop kind of interestingly. And this is often what happens for me is that trying one idea leads to the next. And now that I've heard how this phaser works rhythmically, I'm wanting to hear some delay trails kind of shoot off into the stereo spectrum with that. So I'm going to see if I can create that real quick. I'm not opposed to using presets in this process, again, because I'm trying to move quickly. I've just found something called Warm Crispy Tape in the Sound Toys Echo Boy plugin, and it was pretty darn close to what I was looking for. With something like this, what I wanted to hear is getting the delay to sort of echo the sweep of the phaser and kind of trigger a kind of counter rhythm to what's going on, filling in that little space with something as though you're hearing the the delays of the tambourine just sort of trickle off into the distance. So my new beginning loop here, about five or six steps of iteration down in the process, is this. So there's my evocative rhythm track. I, I know it's done when I can't wait any longer to plug in a guitar or get on whatever the next instrument is and start creating. So join me in the next video for that. I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know any more than you do, but we'll find out when we get there. If you've enjoyed this video, Please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below and click the little bell icon next to it so that you get notified when I post something new. If you're new to recording and you want to know everything that you're going to need to get started, I've created a helpful guide and checklist that's available for free if you just click the link in the notes. There's nothing worse than thinking you've ordered everything that you need. It comes in the mail, you open up all the boxes and you discovered, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that I needed a USB H cable or something like that. So I made a checklist for you to make it super easy. Just click the link below. I'm Dan Phelps. See you next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>